day, Warriors. I, I'm tempted to say good morning because it's uh, 5 o'clock in the morning here. Wake up, Rooster. Wake up. Okay, so Blake and I wake up the roosters every day. I, I just want to show you guys, uh, maybe you've seen Stephanie's commercials on CNBC or Fox or Bloomberg. She's our guest today. And I'm very interested in what she does because she looks into, uh, sees big transactions and dark pools, which are something that, you know, uh, big traders, institutions can do a trade in a dark pool that they don't have to report for 24 hours and that kind of gives them an edge for people trying to front run them and also gives people an edge that can notice things like that and any of us that are technicians know the maxim volume precedes price so uh should be a great interview uh i believe it'll be edifying for you let's get to the markets so uh, Ethereum crypto under a little bit of pressure. So, you know, you still have to give the dollar the benefit of the doubt. Uh, we have a demarcation line all the way down here after the Fed. Dollar's going to have to take that out to change a picture. We keep getting, you know, a spike and then nothing. It kind of reminds me of crypto, actually. You know, nothing goes on and then you get a big candle. You know, you get a big candle and it meant nothing. So I, I still think you have to give the dollar benefit of the doubt, which means lower euro. Uh, the only thing that holds me back from being aggressively bullish a dollar is I still think um, uh, Greg, is, Greg was here yesterday and he talked about the pound having uh, the potential to trade over 34. Uh, this is a pretty good candle. So I'm thinking one, two, three up towards 34 or so. Uh, then I'd be more comfortable even though the pound doesn't have uh, as heavy a weighting as the euro, I'd rather wait for cable to complete up there. And then I'll, I'd probably short them both. So uh, waiting for that, we're getting a huge rebound in US dollar yen. So, uh, you know, a lot of the targets were pretty good. At, you know, 109.60 didn't quite get there. Uh, I guess the question is, is this a major bottom in the yen? And uh, I don't think so because uh, I really don't think this is a major bottom in S&Ps, although I, someone I respect says we have to get one more high in the Dow. So is the Dow outperforming? Yeah, for the Dow to take that out. So I can't, uh, I'm not ready to call this the end of the end decline, but it could be. Uh, all we've done so far is just get back to the first target, right? First target was 1080-ish right in here. So 1080, I think, is an important area for the yen. I guess if we close back above that, uh, you have to say that the correction in the yen ended. Until then, I still give it another shot for making a new low uh, based upon a couple things. Uh, look at this RSI reading down here. Everyone see it? Anyone know what type of low that is? You could answer it in the question box. It's kind of what I have been talking about here in face for a few years now. Uh, RSI renamed. Real simple. There you go, Stephen Marshall. Okay. You win uh, a free membership to the YMCA. One more high in the ES, Ben? Lower than September, okay, but higher than what we just had. Uh, I respect Ben. I, I respect Ben's uh, views. Uh, Ben's been a guest and uh, does a lot of great work. You know, it just shows you uh, what we have here in face. And I know I brought it up. Ben likes to participate, but you know, there are a lot of people that uh, come here that are great traders in their own right, and a lot of them, and maybe even Ben will consider it because Ben, you'd be, you know, a great addition to our um, community here. So we have, uh, I think you have your own service, but you know, there are people that have services that are in there too, but you know, being part of our members chat for you to share some ideas. Anyway, just something for you to consider. Um, 
I really think that anyone who hasn't yet, I know that's why people come in about five, 10 minutes later, they don't want to hear the sales pitch. <clears throat> but I'll tell you, it's not a sales pitch. Uh, you know, I don't uh, represent anything I don't have conviction in or I wouldn't do myself and tell other people to do what I wouldn't do. And, uh, you know, I, I know you guys have heard me say it before, but just hanging out through osmosis and paying attention to Blake and Steve and Stelios and Greg yesterday and Andre's stuff and seeing what Amanda and Joe are doing has helped me become better. So, you know, uh, don't give up because, you know, it only took me 40 years to finally get the hang of it. I hope it uh, only takes you guys four. So, you know, that's the answer I get for most people I interview. And I ask them, how long did it take you to have a breakthrough and epiphany and start becoming more consistent in the market? And that's my average answer. So if you're a year or two into it, you know, uh, just like you have to be patient with yourself, uh, the market, you have to be patient with yourself and just put in the time and persevere. And why should it be any easier than getting a Bachelor of Arts or Science degree at a university to be able to master or at least become proficient in this? Who agrees with me? Hi, Russell. Thank you for the share. Russell still likes uh, USD czar for the next couple days. Okay, so um, what am I doing today? So yesterday I talked about Aussie Kiwi, and I guess there was some central bank action uh, yesterday. Uh, the pullback after we, you know, early in the session, I think we got to here and almost broke to new lows. And the only thing that's holding it back right now uh, on the four hour is this 50 day. So I, I think we're getting a turn here. Uh, of course, to know you have a weekly turn, you have to look at a weekly candle. We're starting to get a decent weekly candle. Uh, a system I use is I just count back a couple weeks to know whether or not I'm gonna have a two week reversal. And that's not that far away. 103.40 by Friday gives you a buy signal. I think eventually, and you know, it's not any huge call for a major trend change. It's just another trade and an opportunity i like the way momentum is diverging unlike having confirmed lows like uh steven saw you didn't have confirmed lows here right you didn't have confirmed and you look at all the different tfs so even here on the four hour it got close but just a shade under 30 but still diverging so that looks okay and uh, with the S&Ps going up, I just had to do it out of principle at 59, I'm short crude from 59.40. Uh, there is a possibility that we're gonna go to this convergence of these two lines. That's a broadening top line. And then the wedge line that broke down, uh, that's gonna come in at 60.50, 60.60. So uh, if Ben is right, um, crude should make a new high with the S&Ps since they've been signed me twins joined at the hip. So uh, we'll see, we'll see. I did it kind of out of principle because after this break of the wedge line, um, Saturday I was talking about, you know, looking to short it at 59 and a half, so it's here. So what I saw Saturday, I have to try, even though I have uh, not as much conviction as I did on the weekend based upon it gave nothing back yesterday and held this 58 level like a champ. So one thing I'd say about the crude, uh, if you don't want to hear the ice crack, uh, back under 58, uh, you have something going to the downside. But again, if we're going to get another blow off in the market, and I was actually surprised uh, we were sharply lower yesterday after the vindication of President Trump by Mueller and watching all the media try and scramble uh, to justify the narrative they had. It's really a, kind of a uh, uh, interesting situation. So we'll see what happens here with uh, the crude. I'll even look at a short term. See, we're not even diverging much on the five. So with that being said, uh, I'll turn it over to Blake. And really guys also, 
uh, don't forget our sponsor. Okay, don't forget our sponsor at Forest Park FX right here. You could click and get rebates or reimbursed and pay for your subscription. They could set it up if you're overseas and give Trent and Justin a call. I think it's a good idea for everyone to have more than one account at more than one broker so you know what kind of racehorse you have and if you're getting the best service possible. So it doesn't help you be right in the market, but you know things like costs and everything else, they do matter. And if you're not getting a rebate, uh, why not look into it? Nothing wrong with cash flow from what you're doing anyway. So how are you doing today, buddy? Me, you know, I am. Uh, my allergies are killing me today. Oh, shit. Sure. Yeah, we can, we can yeah, hear that this morning, mate. Spring. Yeah, it, it is. Is spring. it always like that, Blake? Do you get shots for it or it, anything? I don't get shots for it, but it's uh, it's it's in between seasons. So uh, when we go from, uh, well, we only have spring and winter, spring and summer, spring and summer, winter so and summer. We we only have no Two weeks of spring. We we have spring and summer. We don't even oh. have winter. <laughs> oh, so. That's right. All right. Yeah, <laughs> it's it. it, it <laughs> but when I we go, but when we go back from, you know. Uh, summer to spring and spring to summer, it's uh, yeah. it, the allergies kill me. No, it's, you know there's a therapy. There's a therapy for that. You know that. Uh, oh yeah, I, you know I don't even bother. It's like I don't need to inject my body with a bunch of junk. But uh, anyway, it's like it's a nasal it's, thing. It's natural. I say I think I'm advertising. And that's uh, is that what you're talking about, Steve? Where there's like that liquid that go you breathe it in, and it flushes uh, is, your um, sinuses. I have a I have a few friends that. Um, have done it. There is, there is a therapy that you know you they take samples, they see what allergies you have, and then they prepare oh. some kind of a um, thing for you. And you know you get like you know s s rather soon and suddenly you get immunity to whatever is um, oh. reacting with your body. So let's let's talk let's talk markets uh, really quick. And thanks guys for the uh, allergy support. I've been dealing with this my whole life, so I'll be I'll be fine. <laughs> allergy um, support. Yeah, we also have, do we you we all, you also get that with your uh subscription here? Yeah, yes, you do. Letter. Apparently with uh, you know <laughs> what come to the I get free allergy support uh, <laughs> for free. All right. So, uh the you know, I was you know, I was just looking here at the S&P and uh let, let's let's not forget a couple of things as we're looking at it. Uh first and foremost, we had you know, last week, this failed breakout attempt, okay, above this, uh, you know, 2850. All right, so failed breakout attempt let, let us lower. Uh, now we are back at um, 2820, uh, which the 2820 is just a big, big area. I mean, it, it all is. So I, my assumption is we're going to, we're going to probably retest like this 50% retracement. And then from there, quite possibly turn lower because, because we had this false breakout up here, um, that leads me to believe that we are eventually moving lower, but you know, currently we're grinding as we make our way up there. So, um, my assumption is we're going to do something like this, you know, something like, you know, maybe even like a pennant type of formation. something that looks like this and we have, you know, eventually roll over something like this. I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of loosely drawing that for you guys, but, um, but that's, that's kind of how I see the market currently and uh and and what we're what we're dealing with and we might push up towards you know 28 and a quarter maybe 28 30 um but you know stocks are continuing to you know press higher at this moment uh now the euro man i took this off a little too early i sold it at uh 113 18 and um and it and uh, look at the euro pounds really rolling over the cables ripping uh, right now the euro pound is uh, is moving lower so you got the pound pushing higher out of this triangle the euro is just kind of struggling here and then you've got the euro pound that's just taken an absolute uh, dookie as we've uh, broken this little you know minor trend line here so the euro pound is 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 breaking under some pressure currently so uh, keep an eye on that uh you know uh a couple of guys we were, we were just chatting in the chat room like an hour hour and a half ago and uh, when i got up the pound was kind of spiking higher and uh one of our traders julius is like well you know it, you know pretty much 
you know, people are coming to the conclusion that um, that that you have uh, Brexit approaching, but no one really wants a hard Brexit. I mean, that, I mean, that's bottom line. No one wants a hard Brexit, and and that's something that uh, you know Stelios has been saying here for 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 God, so long, and and you know I have to agree that no one wants a hard Brexit. So as the market comes to the realization that there's going to be some sort of uh, you know but Parliament's not going to allow it, uh, they're going to have to figure out something um, that the cable is getting a little bit of a lift. Now, does does that constitute until we get confirmation that there's not going to be a hard Brexit? Does that constitute the pound, you know, rallying to, you know, 136 right now? No, probably not. But, you know, the pound has this bid underneath it. And that's something that we have to, you know, keep in mind that, that the cable has this continuous bid. Uh, we are coming out of a little minor triangle here, and uh, that could take us back to 133, you know, 20, 133, 50. Uh, I think you have to be a little careful if you're trying to short the cable. If you want to play dollar strength, play it somewhere else, you know, not not against the, the pound at the moment. At least that would be my thought process. That's one of the reasons why I shorted the euro, and I I took a I took a few pips out of the euro, and I should have obviously stuck around a little longer. But um, the euro, uh, you know, also one of the reasons why I'm, I shorted it is real simple. We did have a false breakout last week. Keep keep that in mind. This 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 little square that you see here weighs heavily on my decision making, meaning that uh, you know I I I want to short euros on rallies i actually had an overnight order to sell the euro on a rally to to uh to the 60s uh that didn't get tripped obviously i was hoping that we'd get some sort of spike down in the uh dollar that allowed the euro to spike up here so i could sell into but that that you know just didn't come to fruition um now uh uh i, I let's just talk about the aussie really quick so the aussie's still in this like you know, wedge, uh, we call it a, you know, bearish wedge or, um, all we know, all we know here. And, and the thing to identify is resistance is at 7150 supports at 70 cents and you got to kind of play it within this wedge. Um, Kiwi, we have the RBNZ today. The market is, the market is expecting the RBNZ to stay on hold and to remain pretty divergent from the rest of the world. So everything that I'm reading, most banks are expecting the RBNZ to be, um, you know, just basically st steady as she goes, all right, which will be viewed as hawkish considering the rest of the world is, is, uh, is you know, starting to look at, you know, global, um, a global slowdown, um, uh, most people believe that the RBNZ is immune to that at this moment. So the risk here is, is if the RBNZ comes out with a little bit more dovish slant. If so, um, the risk of the Kiwi back down at 68 cents and quite possibly even lower is high if we have a dovish RBNZ. Now, that does happen today. Uh, today's RBNZ uh, will be at... Um, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern my time, or uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 o'clock my time. So just keep keep in uh, keep in mind that that will be happening this evening uh, with RBNZ. Now let's talk about the Canadian. The Canadian is held up very well. Amanda was in the chat room saying how well the Canadian is holding up, and I, I have to admit, and and I did actually buy some dollar Canadian this morning. I uh, paid 94 for 93 93 uh, 93 133.93 so I, I picked up some this morning let's not ignore two things a crude oil is rallying back towards you know 60 bucks it's been strong okay crude is rallying substantially the s and p's have been bouncing so with the s p bouncing and crude rallying the dollar Canadian realistically should be, if I had to guess, would be somewhere should be somewhere down here, at least, you know, one thirty three fifty somewhere down here. But it's not. That's a fact. So considering 
the dollar Canadian is holding up so well in the face of a strong S&P, a strong crude oil rally, I wouldn't want to be short the dollar Canadian um, right now. Because typically when you have a rally in risk, when you have a rally in risk or you have a rally in cr uh, crude, you're going to have a stronger Canadian dollar, weaker US dollar. That is not the case at the moment. So the risk is starting to mount that a break above you know, this resistance, 133.50, uh, we are going to complete this uh, this inverted head and shoulder pattern, which takes us about right there. I mean, if you look at the the, the measured move, um, the measured move takes us to a near 136. So I would not, and I'm going to state this again, I would not want to be short the dollar Canadian right now. We get any any sniff of risk aversion uh, if the S&P does what I think it's going to do and turn back over today. Uh, you know, after we r rally a little bit further, um, then, you know, you're going to have the dollar Canadian um, much stronger, in my opinion. I think this is a, a, a risk of a breakout here. One of the other things to, to uh, let me just grab the drawing tool really quick. Sorry, guys. My if, if you're just tuning in, my allergies are really bothering me right now. So just um, this would be a little, uh, it's not too visible. Hold on. Let me erase that. Let me grab a better pen. Uh, let's go like that. This looks like a, you know, like could quite possibly be a, a cup and handle formation developing in the, uh, in the dollar Canadian too. That's why a, a break above here is going to be pretty bullish in my, in my view. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to do it right now or today, but I think the risks are starting to mount that way. Uh, let's take a look at the dollar me Mexican peso. Uh, this is a very similar situation to the dollar Canadian. I picked up the dollar Mexican peso this morning at 19. Um, just, you know, I'm barely profitable at this moment, but it's a very similar situation um, that you have stocks that are stronger, crude that is stronger, and the dollar Mexican peso has been just barely pulling back. You know, the the reason why this is such a big risk right now is because the dollar peso, we had a false breakdown last week. If you guys missed it, this is a false breakdown. And, um, you know, one of the other things about the dollar peso, let me, let me grab a different chart. Without all those drawings that you have there, this is a bit. This is a more important chart because this is on a you know weekly basis. Uh, the dollar Mexican peso is still holding up very well, and you know the risks are like I said, starting to mount that uh, that we we get we get a, a rally, and especially with this this like big pin bar right here, false breakdown. See this false breakdown below the uh, below those lows. A false breakdown pin bar this should lead us higher so I'm I've been trying to play the dollar Mexican peso on the long side the last couple of days I think that you know we'd have to see a move now above like you know 19 probably 1912 1913 somewhere around here you know move above that would be pretty bullish okay uh, and 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 again all you need is a turn lower in, in risk appetite and, uh, and, and maybe crude oil to, to pull back a little bit. And, you know, the dollar Canadian could, or a uh, dollar Mexican peso could really stage a state of rally here. Um, U S dollar, Norwegian Krona, uh, you know, nothing really happening there. U uh, S dollar, Swedish Krona, not a whole lot happening there. Uh, dollar yen. So if you guys missed it yesterday, uh, let me, let me go ahead and grab the, chart of the day so if you guys are you know not if even if you're not a forex analytics subscriber but you want to have at least one of our charts a day i try to post one every day you know usually four or five days out of the week i'll post a chart of the day um yesterday was a tenure okay and the tenure bond market hit the 161% extension. You can see it, right? Relative strength divergent and read the analysis. 
The break higher continues the 10-year bond market. However, the 161% extension is being tested. This may pose a threat to bulls as the RSI is overbought and divergent. If we see a move lower or even consolidation from here, the US dollar could see a bounce as yields bounce in the 10-year bond market. Well, Blake, uh, the DSI was also, I think, in the 90s. Uh, the DSI... 93, 93 yeah. I think. 93. Well, there you go. And, uh, and and I think I got the DSI late yesterday. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. Uh, but you're right. So what we what we had here is we had uh, the 161% extension. We hit it. Today we're pulling back as expected. What's the dollar yen doing? Dollar yen's up 46 pips. Because the, the dollar yen's m most susceptible to a rally in yields, right? So, uh, so you have the dollar yen that is bouncing. Now, does that mean that the dollar yen is going to go higher from here? No, not necessarily. The ten-year bond market might just be consolidating this rally, but uh, it has led to some dollar strength, especially against the yen. So it's uh, it's it's uh, pushing up, you know. All these yen pairs, you can see, well, obviously the pound yen is, is bouncing. Uh, Euro yen, Aussie yen, uh, New Zealand yen, all, all have bounced pretty good. Canadian yen uh, bounced pretty good. So anyway, just some um, just some food for thought of things to, uh, to, to think about. And remember, if you guys don't at least check the blog uh, for the chart of the day, you should. I mean, between myself and the rest of the team, we probably post about 60 70 charts and analysis throughout the course of the 24-hour period uh, and if you can't get those 60 70 charts at least you can get one of them on the chart of the day but the better choice is spend a dollar try out Forex analytics for 10 days and then download the app too all right guys well uh, Steve how are you doing this morning I'm good mate how have you been uh, other than allergies, besides like, besides the allergies, yes. yeah, I'm doing all right. Oh, I'm I'm alive. Okay. I'm, I'm I'm not pushing up. <laughs> That's a good thing. So, um, no, all's good. All is good. Um, but uh, I'm going to pass it over to you guys, and hopefully, uh, there's, uh, hopefully you had a nice trip. Uh, I know you had a vacation uh, or uh, a, a small a mini vacation, but a, a holiday is what I meant to say. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Indeed. Oh, good. Well, um, I uh, nice nice to have you back, and uh, nice to be back. And uh, I'm sure everybody's excited to hear your analysis. So, um, I'm going to pass it over to you. And uh, thanks, Coach. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, thank Blake. you, Blake. Oh, hey, Stelios. Yes. Thank you. Hey, hey, uh, Steve. We have numbers good in about, uh, just under two, <laughs> just under two minutes. So, I I want to take a chance, just the, the time, just to very quickly talk about the pound. Uh, because Blake did say that it was uh, rallying today, and for people who have missed it, it uh, what, happened, what happened basically is that the Parliament, uh, UK Parliament, has now taken control of the Brexit process. I mean, that in quotes is not actual control yet, but what is going to happen is they're going to hold uh, some votes which are indicative on how things will progress, and they will discuss everything, you know, no deal or another referendum or whatever it is. The Prime Minister May will see the results of the vote, but she can just ignore them. But still, this is something, you know, we're only a few days away uh, from the extended uh, Brexit date. So I, I, you know, my opinion is that she's going to take these results very seriously. There have also been some uh, rumors that she might offer to resign if certain things are, um, um, uh, if, if things move forward in a certain way, which I guess will mean, you know, will mean if she gets a deal, you know, her deal passing, uh, then she might resign. But anyway, that's what's been happening. So they... The mem members of Parliament of the UK have some power now to show what they want to do. Uh, uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg, uh, one of the most influential conservatives, he is now behind Theresa May, and he did say mm -hmm. that uh, apparently now the only two options are either a no Brexit or May's deal, which uh, sent the pound a little bit higher. Uh, so another development on the Brexit. I think I feel we should have like a theme tune when we talk about Brexit. You know, ta -na -na. <laughs> but anyway. You know, <laughs> Del, maybe you could tell me uh, that last name, uh, Reese Mogg. I remember, and it's not easy for me to remember 30 years ago, but the, I believe uh, the same last name wrote a book called Blood on the Streets. Uh, uh, he was a lord. I think he was Lord Reese Mogg or something like that. I don't remember that. Same I guy don't. or son? Or that, that, goes, that goes nice, nicely with the tune Stella suggested. 
especially if he if he's a lord perhaps we can get something from star wars or whatever <laughs> <laughs> all right all right the numbers Obi. came out and they were quite weak both building permits and housing US building starts. permits yes and housing starts let's see how the usd yen is they didn't reacting. include my pup tent <laughs> <laughs> So far, no real uh, housing has been uh, weak oh, for yeah. you know a decent period of time now. Actually, Try buy a house in San Diego, buddy. One of the tickers I'm actually uh, um, tracking oh. is this one. It's the home See? builders. See, I was yeah. right about that guy, Rismog. See, we have a very smart community. If I don't right, know, if, it's William Rees Mogg, who is Jacob's father and was editor of the Times. Catherine yeah. says, "Okay, profit. Instant. Yeah, see, well done, well done." Blood Dave. in the streets, investment yeah. profits in a world gone mad. William Rees Mogg. Okay, imagine uh, profits in the world gone mad. Imagine what he would have written if he was yeah, alive. Now. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I think he would have included a bottle of Prozac. With uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> or, or or perhaps a razor, so you can actually commit suicide. <laughs> oh, I, I I have people hide those for me, buddy. All right. <laughs> anyway, I knew it rang a bell. That guy. All right, okay, Steve. So, great to have uh, you back, man. So you know, great to be back. Uh, to be honest, uh, home builders, as you see, we've had a nice rebound, and uh, despite data having to do with. Um, uh you know housing uh, remaining a week we we see that you know it, it's actually uh, you know uh, crafting here a, um, a bull flag just above the confluence of the 15 the 200 dma measure so i wouldn't be surprised if i saw another push higher from the home builders before we get uh more weakness because i do think that the data are uh, quite ominous i mean a lot of the things we're seeing we have to go back in 2007 uh, and obviously, whenever you have to uh, draw analogies with 2007, you know, that's not a good sign, right? <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, Stelio, uh, anything else um, from a macro perspective uh, besides the um, developments we had with um, uh, the pound? Not really. We're just expecting the RBNZ later today, but uh, nothing yes, else. Yes, later today. Great. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Speaking speaking of the RBNZ, we can we can actually start from there and then uh, have a look at the rest of them. Uh, Blake had, has already shown that we have a uh, some kind of a triangle here. I do any, think, excuse me, Steve. Tell uh, any absolutely. expectations from uh, New Zealand Central Bank? Well, the expectations are probably neutral, but personally, I don't see, and I think Blake said that as well, I don't see how they can be anything other than neutral or dovish, given what's happening in the global economy and given okay. how New Zealand is um, uh, vulnerable to commodity moves and, you know, gro you know, if global growth starts going down, they're going to suffer, you know, it's, it's uh, un uh, undoubtable. So I think okay. probably going to be neutral with the risk of a dovish note. Okay, because I'm I'm interested because uh, I think there's a a chance that Aussie Kiwi might be turning. Probably not prudent uh, to go into the central bank just like any other central bank uh, decision with a position on that. But uh, yeah, thank you very much. I can I can actually show both of them uh, from a technical perspective. You know, things with the Kiwi are very very clear here. Okay. Uh, we we are on an, a very nice confluence of resistances, 50% fib of the last move lower and this uh, triangles resistance. Um, you know, from a technical perspective, uh, it feels like there is one more leg higher that's missing. So I have to say that I would like to see a break higher and the move towards you know the 61.8 at 7050, even a little bit higher at the 78.6 at 72.20. Uh, but that doesn't change the fact, and the fact is that from a risk reward perspective being short here um you know against this conference of resistance makes sense because you know risk you risk very little and even even if we are to remain uh in this triangle for longer there is still a decent amount of room to move lower i mean at yeah. least 150 pips to the downside so you know depends as i it's said it's a pretty I classic like uh 
ascending triangle if you adjust the line to for the top to be flat i mean it's right out of the textbook of edwards and mcgee yes on, on the other hand on the other hand speaking about oh, yeah. the Aussie kiwi and we saw uh, we saw that last week as well uh yeah. you know uh, you know just looking at the technical so far you yeah. have no reason to be bullish given the fact that we've broken below a multi-year uh, okay. symmetrical triangle um but Somebody cannot ignore the fact that this looks uh, as a nice descending wedge. Uh, yeah. So things are with quite simple. Yeah, with divergences. So things are quite simple as well. Um, you 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 like it to the upside. In my opinion, it's a great uh, breakout play uh, to play a move above one zero thirty eight because, as you see, one zero thirty eight is also some okay. strong horizontal support resistance area. So if we break above here and we actually make it above there as well, I think then we can be talking about a, a confirmed breakout from a descending wedge and okay. also um, breaking out from uh, quite a strong um, area of uh, resistance. Now, if that doesn't happen, so against 1038, uh, you know, somebody has no reason uh, not to be looking lower. So from here as well, there is a way you can you can probably play it, which is you can Volatility be short here. Volatility spreads. You can you can or you can be short here against ah. one o thirty eight, and if you get a break above that, you can close your short and actually reverse position, right? So that's that's also um, a, a possible play. Um, regardless, I think from a technical perspective, both of them look interesting, and both of them, which is all you can ask for from technical analysis give you quite clear levels yeah. to know to know what's happening so uh you know you, you have quite clear levels and you have levels that are actually quite close to where the market is currently at so we should see okay. some uh, some nice action taking place uh in in the day to follow probably um kiwi uh yen uh not a dissimilar situation this this is looking like a nice ascending wedge we broke uh, down from it on uh, on uh, Friday, um, and now we've come back to retest it. So obviously, what happens uh, tonight is going to determine if uh, the wedge interpretation was the correct one, um, or uh, you know there's something else at play. In any case, uh, we we had a nice confluence of supports at 75, 25. So far, it's holding. So I would have to say that uh, if you're looking uh, to be short, a break below 75, 25 is going to be quite a strong signal that uh, we're going to have, um, you know, some bearish price, price action unfolding. On the other hand, obviously, if we break ab above this uh, recent high, we should see a continuation higher. And perhaps then we can be talking about a different type of interpretation, one leg higher, some kind of a horizontal consolidation and another leg higher. Um, I, I still like it more to the downside from a technical perspective, this Kiwi Yen, which of course, you know, doesn't bode well with, uh, you know, uh, Kiwi against the USD looking in my eyes a little bit better for a move higher. Uh, but as I said, there are, you know, there are technical levels uh, that are quite clear and, you know, either you like it short or you like it long, at least you know immediately when you're right and when you're wrong, uh, or you can even wait uh, for the initial reaction and you know take it from there because uh, you know the market from a technical perspective gives you the ability to uh, maneuver um, any way you like so i i will be uh, monitoring today's uh, rbnz quite closely I'm, I'm actually not um unlikely to to take a position because there are some of the kiwi pairs that i i quite like speaking of that um i wanted to show euro aussie uh because on the four hour chart i was doing the key levels before i have to say that as you see here on the four hour chart we have a nice ascending channel i said on friday if i remember right that this price action looks corrective to me uh so um you know we have to acknowledge here that there is an attempt for the pair to break lower uh so i do think that eurozy uh is uh, probably an interesting opportunity to the downside now uh, we can also have a look at the Euro Kiwi. All those are four-hour charts, by the way. Euro Kiwi uh, has already broken 
uh, below the previous lows here. I remember I said on Friday that you know we might get like a, a triple uh, bottom, but usually triple bottoms are rare formations, so I wouldn't be really counting on that. Um, so this breakdown from that level, as you see, we actually came up, we retested it, and so far we're getting rejected, is quite a bare signal. So Euro Kiwi um, would benefit from a technical perspective. It would look good if we saw some some Kiwi strength uh, to see another leg lower after retesting this broken support as uh, resistance. Now let's also have a look at the pound Ozi and the pound uh, Kiwi. Pound Ozi remains within this ascending channel, but clearly, uh, you know, the price action here is uh, simply consolidation. Now, what kind of a consolidation is a little bit er erratical? I think the best, the best interpretation that I can visually see, which is not a, you know, a very popular pattern, is a diamond. Diamond patterns can both be continuation or a reversal patterns. Um, especially when they work as reversals, they're, they're actually quite strong. So pay attention to this because... Very rare, they, very rare yeah, formation, yeah, Steve. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So be careful here because a break below this channel, more or less, is going to be a break below this um, uh, diamond formation. And if this is a diamond top in combination with having a breakdown from this channel, as you see, RSI has been diverging on the four-hour chart since uh, actually at the end of February. So it's a, it's a quite a prolonged uh, RSI divergence here. You know what, so, buddy? You're, you're as brilliant as a diamond. People should put on <laughs> their shades. People need to put on their shades when you're breaking things down here, man. <laughs> Thank you, George. <laughs> All right, man. I know you're blushing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never, I never stop to be amazed by your ability to. <laughs> to, to anyway, be <laughs> everyone, everyone have their uh, sunglasses on while Steve's breaking the markets down. Okay, no, that that is really uh, what a great uh, mentoring. Uh, most people don't even know about diamond formations, Steve. Very nice. Yeah, and as I said, diamond formations, keep in mind, they can be, I mean, according to most uh, technical books, they can be both continuation and reversal patterns. Of course, somebody can easily say, uh, okay, then, you know, why do I care? I mean, if it can be both, you know, why do I care? Simply because, you know, if you, if you get a break out of a diamond formation, one side or another, there is a very high probability that you're going to have continuation. So, yes, it's not enough now to give you direction. But as I said, especially now that it, you know, more or less confluences with this channel, I think that the breakdown from this diamond formation is going to be a very, very nice reversal um, signal. So probably quite a nice trade. Um, probably quite a nice trade. Of course, that would either require the pound to break down uh, or uh, the Aussie to, uh, you know, to produce some strength or obviously uh a combination of the two right because combination of the two will will make it even more powerful um now uh, what's going to happen with uh with uh great britain i have no idea that with the uk i mean this whole situation is an unbearable mess i mean i, I it annoys me that we have to pay attention every single day to what politicians are doing there and they don't even know what they're doing but uh you know we have to you know go along with it uh, but as i said i i think you know if you get a nice technical a very clean technical uh, formation in any of the pound pairs. I don't think you should let uh, the Brexit situation um, keep you away from trading it, uh, because you know, from my experience, very often nice technical patterns uh, end up uh, playing out quite uh, quite beautifully, even when there is event risk uh, coming along. Now I don't know why and how exactly that is happening, but you know, from uh, uh, from simply uh, being, um, you know, uh, being actively monitoring the market for years, uh, you know, that's that's what I um, that's what I usually say. Now, uh, having to do with the dollar, I have to say that the situation with the dollar is quite complex because we've spent quite a lot of time, more or less, doing nothing. Um, we even had a false breakdown from this ascending channel, which is probably quite a bullish signal. 
Um, you can even see here a, uh, you know, not so beautiful inverted head and shoulders formation. So I have to say that the path of least resistance, I, I insist on the fact that the path of least resistance remains higher for the dollar. I'm definitely not a dollar bull in the long term, but you know, I see absolutely nothing that would make me bearish in the short to medium term. So I don't want to go against the technicals and what the market tells me. And the market tells me that there's still, uh, you know, strength. Uh, in the dollar, and I do think we have to uh, respect that potential, which means that another leg higher towards 97.20 uh, as a next move is probably much likelier than uh, the alternative. Now, uh, you already mentioned coach, and you know these are two of the pairs I wanted to show. Um, uh, crude held once again, and I, I like to to see it on a daily chart, because on the daily chart, you can see the importance of this horizontal support resistance area. Uh, crude held once again, this horizontal support uh, zone. So as long as that's the case, you know, you have no reason to be bearish, despite, of course, uh, momentum uh, having slowed down and everything else. Uh, still, you have to respect the potential for more upside. I wouldn't be buying it up here. There's absolutely no question about it. I mean, it's already run. Uh, its course at a big extent, um, but I won't be selling it yet. I want to see a break below 57.50, and then I'm going to be a seller of crude. Um, uh, until that happens, I think you need to, to respect the potential for more upside. We have this, uh, now I'm down to the four hour chart, by the way, you, we have this ascending trend line resistance. It has acted once, twice, three times, four times five times as a resistance, we might go up and retest it once again, right? I mean, uh, there's nothing that tells us that we can't. Now that we have a, you know, a corrective move lower once again, we can even uh, see what FIB extensions we get. So, for example, nice confluence of resistances at 60-70, the 127% extension, and this ascending trend line resistance. So, why not? I mean, we can retest 60 and we can even make it to 60 70 as the next area of resistance now um of course uh, you know that should keep a bid uh, to the correlated currencies but having said that uh, and blake mentioned it about the uh, cad but i want to mention it once again about the knock it should be very very worrying to uh people that are selling the usd knock the fact that such a huge technical level as the 840 level i, I was talking about that since we, since we were moving uh lower since we we were in the middle of this line last leg lower 840 is a key level you can see why because 840 is another retest of this broken uh large formation that we have here uh also horizontal uh, support resistance area, also the 200 daily moving average. And, you know, we had a huge reaction from there. And the short term price action looks corrective to me. You can even see here the potential of an inverted head and shoulder playing out. You can see it here uh, shoulder, head, shoulder with a neckline, incline, something like this. So, given the fact that crude is almost at the highs, uh, USD knock, regardless, reacting to the upside. Imagine what's going to happen uh, if crude actually rolls over. I think USD knock looks uh, very appealing for a move higher. Combining all that I said, just you know, within the last few, five few minutes, that <clears throat> a dollar still looks good to the upside. B USD knock found a major support area and is reacting from there. C crude still will bid. But, you know, doesn't look very easily for that to accelerate higher and, you know, produce some some big upside without a corrective move uh, lower. So I think you the so not. Are you uh, neutral, neutral crude here, Steve? What would you need to get negative crude? A uh, close under uh, 58? I, I, I said it just a while before. I'll show I'm you. Sorry. Here. A, no, absolutely. No problem. Uh, I'll show you. I, I need a break below. CK. I need a break. I need a break below this 57, okay. uh, 57 50. You can okay. see why. Pre previous, previous highs. Previous Got area of, of resistance, previous yeah. area of support. If you, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, that, that was actually another. Let me extend You got the allergies. Uh, again, no, yeah, probably. I don't know. No, probably not. I okay, just well, I, I, thanks for repeating yourself. 
and crude. No problem. As you see, uh, if we extend it back, it, it was resistance once again. So this yeah. is a level that has acted multiple times as a resistance. Once we broke above it, acted yeah. once a support here, once yeah. again a support there. Yeah, so, yes, you know, no matter how the price action unfolds from here, if we come down, revisit this area, and eventually, let's say we do something like this, right. and we eventually break below it, then I'm going to definitely be looking for continuation because simply put, and you know very well, better than most, how uh, orders work. Do you have any doubt that a lot of people that joined the rally uh, yeah. later or that want to protect their profits yeah. in being long crude? Have There's already at least one, one sell stop under there. <laughs> at, at least a million of sell stops probably yeah. below there, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm pretty certain that once we make it below there, uh, there's going to be a lot of position unraveling and that on its own should be more than sufficient to bring us at the next uh, confluence of supports, which is at 55, even below 55. So I think that if we actually break below 57.50, we should see at least another two and a half dollars uh, to the downside quite easily. Also, notice here uh, how yeah. clear RSI divergence we've had and yeah. given the fact that we're almost at the highs, it looks extremely likely that even if we push once again it uh, to, to new highs, yeah. it would still diverge, right? So yeah. RSI is also sending us signals that uh, momentum has definitely slowed. So, uh, you know, crude is at a decent danger of um, sooner rather than later uh, correcting lower. Um, so, you know, combining all that, I think that USD NOC and the fact that we saw, uh, you know, a, a decently looking inverted head and shoulders formation in the USD NOC and a less decently looking, but still you can see an inverted head and shoulders formation in the dollar index. I think combining all that USD NOC doesn't look that bad to the upside, quite the opposite. Blake already mentioned that the same, uh, the, the same is true for USD CAD. You can see it here, USD CAD came down and retested this broken trend line. It's now pushing higher. So far has found resistance at 134.50, but the price action after pulling back from there looks quite corrective. So use the card if you look at it. Uh, I think there is no real uh, reason why it shouldn't make it. It shouldn't produce one more leg higher towards 135, uh, where we're going to actually meet this uh, parallel trend line to this trend line. And, and we see what happens from there. Okay, we see what happens from there. Uh, but 135 looks quite easy. Let's see, we had a we had an interesting level bridge in USDMXN. Now, having to do with USDMXN, um, I don't agree with the premise of the false breakdown that that Blake mentioned uh, because I don't think it was a false breakdown in the sense that you know very well, Coach. We've talked about it several times, and that's what we talked about with uh, Grega on our uh, Real Vision interview. Um, this was probably a fourth wave correction, and after such such a thing, you expect one last move lower, and we did get that one last move more lower. It would be even even more perfect if we actually had it extend a little bit lower to make it to this asymmetrical triangles support. But regardless, this formation has now sat it, satisfied its purpose, which was to produce one more thrust lower. So. Um, you know, despite interpreting it a little <coughs> bit differently, I do agree mm -hmm. with Blake that there is a, now a real danger for the USD MXN uh, to have found a tradable low. And, you know, given a uh, dollar looking quite well and the fact that, uh, you know, we came close once again to this long term symmetrical triangle support, there is a decent chance that we're going to move higher. And anyhow, the risk reward ratio being much closer to support than resistance is in favor of bullish interpretation. Even if this is a corrective move lower, the move lower from this first leg higher looks corrective itself as well. So, yeah. you know, even even like this, I would expect at least one more uh, push higher, right? So, yeah, because you know, Steve, the RSI at the low was confirmed. So after this rally, maybe back to your blue line, might it be. Could, could pretend another low that won't. Might confirm. be. Yeah, just, be. you know, 
I, 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 I can't take the trade because of that. You know, you have to uh, stick with your teachings, right? So, uh, you know, for Lowe's, I need at least a, one or two divergences before I go with it. Uh, I miss a lot of stuff because of it, but just something uh, I We see. all miss a lot of stuff because of the rules we put in place. Yeah. But that's good because don't don't forget. I I mean I'm not I'm not referring to you because you know it very well, but I'm referring you know to, to our listeners, especially those that might be more amateur. Don't forget that uh, filtering out stuff is actually what you're supposed to be doing all day long, right? Yeah. Because if if you took everything that looks on some kind of a time frame interesting, then you would just be trading all day long like a hundred, a hundred different things. <laughs> And oh you my would, God! You would find, I'd have yeah, a nervous find, breakdown. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, like I, I did job, in my twenties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. our, our job is to filter out things, right? And also, part of this process is not to worry when you realize that you filter out, filtered out, you eventually filtered out some ideas that ended up playing out quite nicely. I mean, you shouldn't ponder over trades that might have looked interested, but you actually never got into taking, uh, yeah. you should, you know, focus on what is next, right? What comes next that looks good and you might uh, want to take. That, that's what I think. And, you know, this requires training, but, you know, training that comes through experience. So, you know, in my um, opinion, just, you know, keep doing what you're doing, just keep trading, um, learn from your mistakes and if you end up surviving the first year in the markets, then time is working uh, to your benefit. Yep. And remember, the cream always rises to the top. So. Yeah, very, very rightly. Yeah. Uh, USD and NARS, such as RBA, RBA has uh, swiped 5 billion USD through long term swaps. As per Bloomberg, will this make it bullish or bearish in the short term? Uh, I don't pay attention so much to that because the market is going to do what the market wants to do. Many, many, many recent examples. One rather recent is the Turkish lira. So I don't really uh, bother so much about what the uh, central bank is doing, having to do with supporting um, uh, the currency, because we've seen many times uh, central banks being unable to support the currencies, no matter what they do, or anyhow uh, unable to do so until they throw in the sink as well. Uh, what I can tell you is the fact is that the USD INR remains in what looks so far as a corrective formation. So I would be quite careful. I wouldn't be buying the USD INR as long as we close to this um, trend line um, and close to the 61.8 because this has been, it's, it's a currency that has been in a uh, long term downtrend against the USD. Now, of course, it looks opposite because it's the USD INR here, not the INR. USD. Um, so, you know, I would I would be rather careful. Uh, INR still looks uh, quite vulnerable, in my opinion. USD INR still looks decent to the upside, despite this pullback. I don't really see any impulsive characteristic to this move. Uh, so, um, you know, it is what it is. Um, we had a friend here writing that the euro is taking a nosedive. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, it is. If you look at it in the shorter term, um, uh, you know, on the daily, it, it still doesn't look at, like anything big, but I have to admit that I need to favor the downside for the two reasons that Blake mentioned. First of all, we had this double confluence of resistances, rejecting price action, especially uh, given the fact that we had an intraday false breakout. And second of all, just look at the price action in general. I mean, there is nothing bullish with that. Um, so, you know, revisiting this uh, confluence of supports at 111.80 something or even moving lower towards this uh, horizontal, um, sorry, this uh, descending trend line um, support, which now comes roughly at 110.80, seems quite likely. So if I had to do something with the Euro USD, it would definitely be uh, being short uh, instead of being uh, long. Um, so, yeah, nothing surprising there. What do you think about gold here? Okay, thank you for reminding me. As you know, I am short gold. Um, I've actually de-risked it now because I took a little bit of a profit and I have to say that gold so far looks beautiful uh, because it's it's reacting uh, to this 
Uh, it's the third time, uh, it's the third day within the last four trading days that it has been reacting from this confluence of resistances here. So as long as we keep getting rejected from this area at around 1320, I still like it to the downside. Um, so I do think it's likely that gold is going to roll over from here and produce at least one more leg lower. The same thing applies with uh, silver. I mean, there is... There is some and nice, how, how about uh, copper after this, Steve? Uh, did it negate all your bullish things uh, by going back down to 285? I did close my position with 1.3% of a loss, and I have closed my position in um, in USDMXN taking more than 2% profit. So both those positions are now over okay. for me. Okay. Uh, the reason I did so is because we violated this horizontal breakout area. On yeah. the other hand, uh, it's still it's holding. holding right. Yeah, that 285 area is, looks important to me. Yes, yes, it does. Uh, although I really don't like two things here. One of them is that false intraday break higher that we had from yeah. this uh, flag, which ended up uh, from from a bullish from a very bullish candle that it was looking like we might have. It ended up being a shooting star um, candlestick, and then the next day. We right. had very strong continuation. We had a long right. black candle. It was no bull it, flag. It, we, it looked like a bull flag, and it evolved into something else. And I'll, let me just say one thing, Steve. If copper's bad, and I pulled the weekly up a week or so ago, if we're turning bad here, we're going to take out that double bottom, and that does not portend uh, real good things for the global economy. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No, it's, it, 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 it's definitely not good. I have to say, though, that uh, uh, taking a stab at, at a short in platinum, uh, in palladium, sorry, uh, starts looking like a decent uh, oh, yeah. opportunity here. If I go down to a four-hour chart, you can see that we had quite an impulsive move lower, and perhaps we're going to get something like this Yeah. to at least retest this ascending channel, uh, or we might get uh something like a little triangle something something like this how are so bills I, palladium i know it's pretty thinly traded are they okay they're decent yeah, yeah they're okay. decent they're All decent right. All right. i i don't have any complaints you know uh i i'm not judging from the perspective of a scalper because i'm not right one. so perhaps not so ideal if you're looking to scalp it but you know if i go in i'm going to be looking for a move of let's say Three, four, five percent. So, right. you know, if you're looking like for that kind of a move, now what's the difference? Like, yeah, I mean, you know, who cares? I mean, if yeah. I'm looking to like two percent move, now making that move because of the spread two point zero five, or making the potential profit like you know, from like let's say three or four percent, like three point ninety five. You know, it's it's like uh, collecting. Uh, pennies in front of the roller coaster, right? I, I yeah. don't really care about it. Let me I just mean, check and see if uh, 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 our guests. I'm so here. indifferent. I'm so indifferent to execution that just to give you an idea, the only platform that I use to execute is my mo my mobile phone's application because okay. I'm really indifferent to execution. You know. Stephanie, are you here? Stephanie Cameraman, uh, maybe registered under a different name. If you are, can you please type something in the question box for me? Go ahead, Steve. Oh, yeah, she is there. What name are yeah, you yeah, I registered? Can, I, 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 I saw her. Don't worry about oh, it. I'm, I'm promoting her. Because I spelled your name wrong, Steph. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I promoted, I promoted her. She, here she is. Okay. Oh, hi, Stephanie. How are you? Hi, okay, Dale. David. I uh, leave you to your interview. Enjoy. Okay, okay thanks, Steve. Uh, yeah, I, I spelled it with a PH. So uh, great to have you here. You can share your screen if you'd like. Okay, hold on a second. Show my screen. Let me. There just... you go. It's up uh, there. showing the wrong one though. Hold on okay. a minute. Okay. Um, below uh, below the show screen button, there is a little arrow. If you press it, you can change the screen uh, that you're sharing. The, oh. you, you will get a pop-up with all your available screens and you can change it. Oh, there we go. Oh. Yep, that's it. Perfect. So, Stephanie, I, you know, I, I've seen 
all the promotions for your new book all over television. I, I, I thought maybe it was the same person, but you know, after I w went to your website and took a look at a few things, uh, I realized uh, that it was the same person. Well, really a pleasure <laughs> to meet you. And uh, you know, I, you're, I, I'm interested uh, in your work because you know all technicians believe uh, volume precedes price. What I'm really interested in is uh, your journey to getting to where you are, because I know uh, I would, I'm a betting man, a speculator, that you didn't start looking at dark pools when you started. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, your journey and how you got involved in the industry and business? Well, how much you want to put on that bet, Dale? Okay, uh, uh, one, one tip. <laughs> It, it'll be like <laughs> it'll be no like bet. trading places, and we'll do a Duke brother bet <laughs> one dollar that uh, you knew about dark pools at the beginning of your career. Yes, I actually did. It's crazy. Oh wow! I, Twenty-four I years old. Oh my goodness! So, I know. Uh, who I introduced you to that at, at the start of your career? Were you just trading on your own? And no, no, nope. okay. I, I actually went to college for psychology. And um, after four years, I had a decision to make. Should I go get my master's or should I enter the real world and try to get a job? And I had so many student loans. I really had to get a job. So I, I got a job. Actually, I got really lucky. I went to happy hour with my girlfriend. And that's really how I landed a job. It's crazy. Uh, I, I knew nothing about trading. My best friend, Dahlia, uh, got a job as a receptionist at Schoenfeld Securities, which is the largest prop firm in New York, especially at the time in 1994. Okay. And she got invited to happy hour with all the million, the guys that make millions of dollars. And she didn't want to be the only female. So, you know, she calls me up and she's like, hey, Steph, you want to come to happy hour? I was like, well, like, not really. Well, these guys are coming. You know, they make millions of dollars. They're really cool. You're going to really love them. And I was like, well, maybe maybe I'll go. All right, you twisted my arm. <laughs> um, and so I went, and I just started talking. They were the nicest guys. You would never think in a million years, you know, that these yeah. guys made all this money. And so one of them said, hey, I need an assistant. I, I made a million dollars this year, but I must have left a hundred thousand dollars on the table because I just couldn't keep track of uh, my size positions. You know, at the end of the day, I realize, oh, I'm still short, you know, a thousand shares of Microsoft or I'm still long. And um, I said, well, I need a job. And he said, can you start Monday? And I said, yeah, I can start Monday. And they sat me in front on Monday of an instant machine. That was my first experience in trading was, and that's a dark pool right. system. That is how I learned how to trade, by seeing the dark pool. I, I don't think it gets better than that. Wow. You, you know what, uh, how much, could I use the Yiddish word, Soros? people yes. go through um, <laughs> <laughs> before they, you know, uh, are led in the right direction and how much capital they burn through. Uh, with the charlatans out there promising that they have the secret and uh, uh, right. you were very, you know, you had an angel looking out for you that day and what a great happy hour. And yeah. let me let, let me ask you this. Uh, did they remind you kind of like of the star in Billions X? <gasps> yes. Uh, I, I went to high school with him, first of wow. all. Okay. The guy I, that he portrays, it, it's a based oh, on... Uh, Oh, I didn't even know that because I know yeah. the actor is English and he comes uh, in with a, you know, kind of an East Coast. Uh, Steve you know, Cohen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The story's loosely based on that, which is there must be something in the water of where yeah. I grew up. Uh, <laughs> Long Island. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, what a great story. And uh, so, you know, another uh, another point that sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know. And uh, you definitely uh, broke the ice with professionals. So tell us what you learned about dark pools then. And I'm sure that over the years, you've had some type of uh, refined it for the people that you teach and for your own trading and for your rooms. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us about the evolution about how you, first of all, let's, let's start with some people have heard the word. Um, 
What are dark pools? I know the advantage is that people don't have to report the trade for 24 days. So it's kind of like the guys on the floor when I was at the Merck would do their big positions upstairs uh -huh. and then walk on the floor. So no one really knew until they went into open outcry what they were doing. So tell us about uh, dark pools. Yeah, sure. It's just an alternative exchange where the big guys do all their trades. I mean, these are the guys that are moving the market. Okay. I don't listen to the news. I have it on mute all day. Uh, I'm an old fashioned tape reader. Okay. And what's amazing is so back then in the nineties, you had to belong to a very big, powerful firm to get access to the dark pool. The internet machine was very, very expensive. And again, I was very lucky to get that job sitting in front of it and doing all the orders for my entire table. Now it's available for everybody. All right, let me ask you, Steph, was that the same thing as people that called themselves Soze Bandit? Yes, yeah, Soze Bandit. Yeah, okay. small order execution system. You can see my screen right now. The software I'm using, DOS Trader Pro. Okay. Now, this is very similar to what I started on, uh, being an, an old fashioned Soze Bandit, they called us. Um, okay. And it was, it's great. One click. It was very easy to buy and sell. Although I did start out, I had a clerk at the other side of the table who was doing all our orders. But we could also, yeah, and now it's so easy. I yeah. mean, you just open up a trading account these days and you can just start trading, right? I, mean, I think that's why a lot of people lose money in the market because they have no idea what they're doing. They haven't been trained by successful people. Um, they just open an account and start trading. But the good news is we have access to the dark pool. It's free. I don't, I don't sell it. I just teach people how to trade using it. Um, but the INET, the NASDAQ book viewer, you can see this book right here yeah. uh, on the spy. Yeah. Instanet, uh, NASDAQ took over Instanet. So you, I use okay. two books, the INET and the ARCA book. And that pretty much shows me where all the big guys are hiding on various stocks. Uh, let me just see if I can find Goldman Sachs. I look and see where Goldman Sachs is hiding. Uh, he's not on here, uh, but I go down through stocks. How do you know the firm? It'll say GSCO. Okay. Yeah, ori yeah, originally, you know, all we used to do is follow Goldman Sachs. That was our big secret. If he had a huge offer, we weren't going to buy the stock. If he had a huge bid, we would buy the stock. You just follow him. He got smart. He started hiding his orders in Island, which was the first ECN book. He hit his orders on the Instanet. The, the dark pool exchange. Um, he hit his orders in all these books. He became anonymous. And now we don't even have any market makers on the level two. I mean, it's all books. Everybody's yeah. anonymous. Nobody really has to make a market anymore. That's the scary part. That's why Is we that, have let me, ask, that. let me ask you that. Is that because of decimalization or the fact that the floors are now bowling alleys and there just isn't as uh, hardly any human beings involved? I, you know, I don't know the exact reason why, but it's scary because if the market starts to turn down, these yeah. guys just disappear. There's, there's no liquidity. You know, that's why we have a flash crash. Right. Um, so, so the market yeah. structure, uh, it's easy to open an account, but if there's ever uh, a time where you need someone to make a market, they're not there anymore. And that's what people are talking about when they talk about fragility of market structure, correct? Exactly, exactly. Very, very fragile. Um, and so, you know, you got to be very careful. Um, you, ha you have to really know what you're doing. You know, just most people out there have, have no clue. Um, they're guessing, they're hoping, they're not really watching the tape. They're not seeing where the big guys are buying, where they're selling. You know, over the past, um, let's see, six years, I've called 13 out of 13 market corrections before they've happened. I'm 13 for 13. And so people think I'm psychic and all these things. And I just follow a dark pool pattern, which mm -hmm. is really not difficult. Um, once you know what it looks like, anybody can do it. You getting yeah. any messages, uh, now for yes. either. Uh, yes. Okay. That's what I'm going to show you is recently 
we've had very heavy dark pool prints and this is this yellow sticky pad on my desktop for you with the okay. levels yeah we've had really heavy prints and it's been a while since uh december 26th we had late dark pool i call them buy prints these are trades that were done yesterday and not reported until today and they get a they get around that by crossing their trade from their London desk with their New York desk. And when they do that, they don't have to report these trades. And we see, we see them every day, but they're not very heavy. But once they start to get really heavy, that's when we have a very big move in the market. And recently in March, you see I put the dates down here, yeah. these late trades on the SPY started coming in. The biggest one is 278.54. So let me just pull up my spy chart. I put a, a notification that, that, out that's yesterday. Selling, that's selling that you're picking up I don't up know there. yet. Again, oh, I, I I'm see. not going to guess. Okay. However, I will go very short if we close below 278.54 on the spy. Okay. We went there yesterday, but we did not close below it. You know, there's a lot of noise during the day. We have to close week below it i'd actually prefer a close below 278. okay um, so that's where i draw the line in the sand okay so you, and you need, and you'll, you'll you'll wait for a daily close even if you have to uh mm -hmm. you don't get the edge and you have to chase the break you'd rather wait for the confirmation than try and get an edge yeah i mean i have protection on you can buy really cheap i trade options you can buy really cheap out of the money puts just to have just in case yeah. But as far as going into a full-fledged position, yeah, you, you want to wait. You don't want to put yourself into the trade. You know, that's when it gets psychological, right? And, and so you really want these levels. If this guy is selling at 278.54, then we should be below it. We should be making lower lows. But we're not right now, not yet. Right, right. So that's you're, just like how a, you're like a market detective. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you're like a, you're a private investigator, you yes. know, looking at what's happening behind the curtain. Exactly. And, uh, really interesting. Uh, so uh, let me ask you this: uh, Do you have? Uh, do you scalp? Do you position trades? It sounds if like you call corrections that you're, you know, kind of a position swing trader. Am mm -hmm. I defining you correctly? Yeah, I do everything. Um, so okay. I'm a I'm a day trading bandit. <laughs> Oh okay. yeah, I'm sitting here all day, I'm watching the tape. So right. I'll scalp, you know, 10 cents, 20 cents, 50 cents or more, depending on what I'm trading just during the day. Uh -huh. Or I mostly like to do overnight swing momentum trading at the end okay. of the day, getting in and in the morning getting out. But I also do seasonality, longer term trading and longer term portfolio trading. So I, do, I really do everything. Okay, you know what? I, I, I was just thinking about this. You, you said once you're in, that's when it gets scary because that's when people's emotions begin to um, really get in their way. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. it may be dark pools may give you messages, but and I don't care what kind of method you use, most of it is in your head. So let me ask you if your background in psychology, which uh, uh, you probably are applying at least for yourself and teaching others, uh, what do you, what type of psychology is important? I I teach that if you're saying to yourself before you click your mouse, I hope this one works. That you need to <laughs> that you need to shut down your platform. Uh, I believe that you you do your work, you have your contingencies and reasons, and then you say, okay, Mr. Market, I've done my work. Prove me wrong like a warrior mm -hmm. what do you teach your people okay so 90 percent of trading is psychology 90 percent you know there are people that go from system to system to system and they don't realize like why isn't this working you know and it's because they're not uh disciplined they're not okay. following the system and i always say you know if you break your rules you're teaching yourself not to trust yourself it's awful exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's awful. I like to take the other side of the trade, you know, empathy, you know, if people are short, you know, where's that spot that's just going to just break them where they just, you know, throw the flag in the air and cover, yeah. you know, the short squeeze, you know, that's, yeah. yeah. Well, I, let me I, ask you, oh, yeah, go ahead. 
Oh uh, well, you know my handle is Forex Stop Hunter, and from my days on the floor and uh, as a runner, Stephanie, that's how I started. I noticed how brokers were very interested mm -hmm. if the order had STP at the end of it, and everyone knew where the stops were. I mean, people ask me now, Dale, how do you know where the stops are? And I go, well, you know, it's easy. Uh, if you were short, where would you put your buy stop? That's where everyone's is. So. Um, do, yeah. you, uh, do you look for those situations like floor traders used to where you know where there's liquidity on buy and sell stops and trade into them and then use that liquidity to either cover or reverse or take the other side? Only if there's a print. So I'm never going to go against the trend unless I see the dark pool selling. We okay. see them every time. That's my number one rule. Don't try to peg the top. Don't try to peg the bottom. But don't trade in the middle of the day either. You know, that's when we always what? say, yeah, the big guys go out for lunch. We call them the Armanis, right? The suits go out for lunch and they leave, like, they leave the minions, right, in charge. Right. And the, the job of the minions is to stop everybody out that they can. So they whip it up, whip it down, whip it up, whip it down, stop. It's like the Armanis come back and they're like, yeah, we stopped out 1,000 people, you know? Let me ask you, do you, you ever go to lunch with these guys? Because I have just one story I have to tell that is hilarious. <laughs> when I was a runner, I worked at the Merck, and you know, Chicago in the wintertime, it's pretty cold, right? Like it is in New York. And um, like, you know, we'd go out for breakfast. So anyway, uh, these guys would have, you know, five-figure equity swings, and we could have just gone down to Union Station and not braved the cold and had breakfast. But instead... We'd walk three and a half, four blocks in zero degrees to Lou Mitchell's because they had a breakfast special. Because uh, And then when the check came, we needed a CPA to divide the check. So the you know they were having forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 swings before they went for breakfast. Yeah. But it's real money mm. when you're buying a meal. Ever, <laughs> can you believe that? It's a true story. I'm not making it up. So... Well, anyway. I don't leave my desk. Yeah, I, I eat lunch at my desk because that's when the dark pool shows okay. their hand. Because these guys are out for lunch, yeah. and we see the biggest prints that move the market during lunch. So I don't leave ever. What that's are the exact time. hours? Like uh, one o'clock yeah, Eastern. Yeah, eleven o'clock Eastern. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They start coming in, and I know because I usually get my lunch right. I run. I work from home. I have a home office. Yeah. I run, get my lunch, bring it back here, and I'm trying to eat, and they're just coming in the prints, left and right, left and right. And so I, I have a dark pool app, and I'm always sending, like, you know, notifications on these big prints, and I map out the trades, and I, I can't even eat my lunch. It's that heavy during lunch. And these are the trades you want to pay attention to, not the ones that are market on close. Those big orders you see at the end of the day have no bias. It's okay. just the trades right in the middle. They don't think anybody's watching. And, you know, we see insider trading. I've seen trades on um, fear before the Brussels terrorist attack. Massive trades on TVIX. Have you heard of TVIX? TVIX? Yes. yes. I, I lost a fortune in it. Don't oh, hold yeah. Don't it. trade that. It just you no, know, you could trade it. Well, oh. you could trade it, but don't hold it. No, but that's the problem, you know, yeah. people trade it, it works out great, and then they trade it again, and it, it closes below, but you don't get yeah. out, and the next day it just dumps. I oh, know. You, must have read my, you must have read my book. I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, Steph, uh, you teach people, right? You're mentoring people. and I do. I run a live trading room. I okay. trade live and do teach you, people. Do you have people start off? with uh, demo accounts or uh, teach them, you know, I have a song, use less leverage. Um, for someone starting off, uh, what do you recommend they do before they go live? Sure, well, I have a program where they have to go through my intense class called boot camp. It's two weeks, you have to be trained first before you come into my room. My room is not a beginner room and I have to personally train you. And it's day trading, overnight trading, longer term trading. And then I tell them to paper trade, okay? okay Make okay. sure you have the system down and you're doing everything right. Now there is money and emotions that comes into play when you're trading with real money. So once you switch over 
small. Start with, you know, one or two contracts. If you're doing options, if, yeah. I always say if you can make money on two contracts, you can make money on 10, you can make money on 15, 20, but there does become a point where you feel uncomfortable, you know, your share size. And it doesn't matter how much money you have. It's mm. just that spot where you just don't trade properly. And then you move down to where you were before that. And that's usually your perfect spot. Okay, yes, yeah, to your sleep level where you're okay going yeah. to sleep and you're not exactly. up all night watching uh, the action overseas. Uh, any other answer? Uh, I, I'm assuming that you only trade equities because is there any dark pool action in any other instruments besides equities and indexes? Yes, <laughs> yes. well, there is. Um, I watch the stock, the dark pool on stocks, but I do trade options 95% of the time. Um, but we do get dark pool activity on the dollar. And I know you guys are really oh. into Forex. Oh, yeah. yeah. We yeah. do get dark pool. So we pretty much know where the dollar is going. Although I'll tell you, my traders in my room, they don't trade Forex. Uh, we strip most of us just trade uh, options. But we trade gold. And, of course, gold, knowing where the dollar is going is very helpful with right. gold. No, Except, so uh, have you noticed recently the big rally we had in gold happened with a stable to strong dollar, which is kind yes, of unusual? that happens when the dark pool comes in, gold and the dollar will go up at the same time. I've seen it a few times. Why? What are they doing? It's so strong because it's when there's real, okay, so there's two reasons why people buy gold. There's yeah. the reason that the dollar is, you know, going down, so safety. The dollar hedge, yeah. Right, dollar hedge. Or they're just really buying gold. <laughs> China's yeah. coming in right. and buying gold and Russia's coming in and buying gold. It's going to go up no matter what. And I've had arguments over the years with fundamentalists where I've said, yeah. well, gold Deflation is going up. Deflation people. Yeah. yeah. So, IAU. Uh, you have to watch the stock IAU. iShares Gold Trust. The dark pool loves it. Every time we've had huge trades on it, we've had a big move. More than GLD? We do get prints on GLD and GDX, but it's IAU. They're massive okay. and they're Great unusual. Tip. Great you tip. I'm, right, I'm writing it down because yeah. I have all old time. I don't trade it, though. It's slow. Okay. I, I like GDX. I've been trading that for the past uh, couple months. Okay. So you, uh, you actually, instead of trading the gold contract, you trade GDX using yeah. IAU as your tell. Yeah, but I, right. agree, I agree with uh, the guy you just had on, Stylionis. Yeah said that yeah. 1320 level yeah. um and that's yeah that's really really key right now i'm watching that as well okay well you know i really enjoyed meeting you stephanie and like it or not you're now my trading warrior sister oh so uh <laughs> well, welcome to my trading warrior family awesome. and you know this would be a good time for you to show your website uh oh i don't want to do that you don't no, want to do that i didn't come here to sell anything i just came okay. to Wow. To meet you. Yeah, okay. to meet you, talk to you. I mean, you can get my book, you know, Dark okay. Pool Secrets. It's, it's on CNBC. You ever, you ever go skinny dipping in your dark pool? It's, I'm not telling. <laughs> okay. Why do you think my webcam's not on today? That's all I got to say. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, people could follow you on Twitter at Volume Princess, yeah. not Princess. That was Larry princess. Berman. Yeah, he yeah. did that. That was a great, a great handle, Stephanie. I, you know, <laughs> I, I, I wish you continued success um, for you and all that you teach and your message. And really, it's fantastic to have somebody uh, helping lead people that, you know, are genuine and want to learn how to be a trader like you were blessed with uh, your first break and yeah. that you're paying and that you're paying it forward. So it's great uh, to give back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I, 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 let me ask you this. I get as much pleasure, sometimes even more, from seeing people I teach do well than my own account. Oh, yeah. They do better than me. <laughs> yeah. You found that out, too, that the students become the I teacher? Love it. Oh, huh? I've had guys oh. <laughs> over the years, yeah, make a lot more money. And you know what? It's awesome. That's, yeah. that's priceless. Seriously. Yeah. I've, I've done very well. I'm not complaining, but it is priceless when you see one of your students. Yeah. Really take it to the next level. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Stephanie Camerman, thank you so much for your time. Really enjoyed our conversation. And oh, thank you, maybe yeah. we could do it down the line and 
please Anytime. keep in touch. All right, Stephanie. I'll take care, Dale. You too. All right, everyone, that's our Turnaround Tuesday. Uh, you're welcome, Melina. Uh, remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. We'll be back here tomorrow. You're very welcome. And thank you again, Stephanie. Adios.